Born of the Spirit. Born of the Spirit. Born of the Spirit. Now, if we look at the original of that, and we, we're going to go to the book of John this morning in chapter 3, and we're going to talk about being born of the Spirit. What does it really mean to be born of the Spirit? And I've had discussions with people. Some people have even stopped me when I was um, just starting to minister in Stutterheim when they sent us here from the Open Door Church. And some one lady said to me, what is this born again rubbish? Really, she cornered me in the bank. I couldn't slap her in the bank, so <laughs> make a scene. <laughs> I had to compose myself and smile and be nice, you know. Do you, do you do that sometimes when someone asks a stupid question? You give that smile, you know, that sarcastic smile. And uh, I explained to her from the scripture, because that's the only way you can go to explain what it means to be born again. What does it mean to be born again? And even uh, Nicodemus was, Demakar, <laughs> even Nicodemus was caught off guard when Jesus tells him you must be born again. And we're going to go there now. We're going to talk about you must be born again. Yeah, let's um, talk about that first part. You must be born from above. That's what the original manuscript says, born from above. That's what, when the Bible was written, that's what the Lord wanted us to understand. To be born again is to be born from above. Not on the earth, but from the heavens. From heaven, amen, born in the spirit. And then it says, to be born again, you must understand that you did not save yourself. Come on. This is the point that was made to Nicodemus. In the same way as you do not have anything to do with your natural birth, did any of you choose to be born? You must be very great or you must have pre-existed. If you believe in, pre, in reincarnation, maybe you were there before you were born and you had a say in your birth, amen. Were you able to influence your parents, your mother, to say she wants to give birth to you? No, no, no. You didn't have a say in being born. Amen. You also do not have anything to do with your salvation. Now, some of you would shoot me down for that statement if I just left it there, but I'm going to clarify it. Listen to what I'm saying. It is solely a work of God. Amen. The minute we begin to think that we saved ourselves, we endured another service <laughs> under Pastor Julius, we did enough good works. Surely, Lord, I've prayed 50 hours this month. I'm a good Christian now. Maybe I can go to heaven. That's the wrong gospel. That's not the way God said it. He says the free gift of God. Now, a gift is from God, amen. A gift can only be given by God. You cannot earn a gift. You cannot earn salvation. How many of you know that, amen? It's solely a work of God. If it was a work of man, then all of us could have gone to the cross. All of us could have paid the price. Any of us could have done it. But only Jesus could pay the price upon the cross. So being born again is based on solely what God has done. And you cannot save yourself. You do not enter unless you are able to save yourself. You do not enter the kingdom by living a better life, but by receiving a new life from God. You don't enter the kingdom of God by a better way. You see, there's a move in some churches, and hopefully not in our church because we are carnal after all in many ways. Our flesh is still with us. We still walk with us. And sometimes we want to put so much emphasis on the good that we've done that God must be impressed from heaven and go, Woo -hoo, Julius, well done, well done. Such a good boy this morning. You've prayed wonderfully. You've worshiped beautifully. You've uh, led the church beautifully. No, the minute that I do that, I'm in the flesh. The minute that I begin to think like that, that we have, we've built a great church, we have not built the church. <laughs> Let me tell you again, we have not built the church. We have not built a single part of the church. We have only listened to the Holy Spirit and He built the church through us. If you didn't have the Holy Spirit, you would be building the church from the long blueprint. Blue, 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 blueprint, not the blueprint. That's for the bruise, eh? Okay. Blueprint, you've been building off your own blueprint. You've been building a Tower of Babel. You see, there is something in the world. Don't go to the scripture yet. There's something in the world that is the spirit of empire. And it's not only in the world, but it is in the church. And we spoke about it this morning. We touched on it. And people have been saying these things over time. That we cannot take the glory because the glory alone belongs to God. We have these statements in church, but is it true? How much pride is in the building of the church? How much pride is in the accomplishment of the church? 
Paul said he cannot boast in anything but knowing Christ and him crucified. That's the greatest knowledge that Paul had, is to know Christ and him crucified. He said everything else compared to that is rubbish. <laughs> compared to the knowledge of knowing Christ and him crucified, do you know Christ? And him crucified? Do you know the work that he did on the cross? The greatest revelation of the church, I said it early today, is to know Jesus. Is to know who Jesus is and what he's accomplished. And without Jesus, I'm utterly useless. If your flesh is speaking louder than your spirit right now, you need to slap yourself. Say, come on, pride, subside. 